Today, we talk about AV software development and compatibility with ROS. Hello and welcome to another DSpace Learning Bit podcast. Today, we talk about AV software development and compatibility with ROS, but more specifically, the ROS bridge for interoperability between ROS and RT Maps. I'm speaking with Peter Ngur, Product Manager for RT Maps, real time multi sensor applications at DSpace. Hi, Peter, and thanks for joining me today. Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. So we mentioned the ROS bridge. Could you tell us a little bit more about what this is? So the ROS bridge is uh, a pair of uh, RT Maps components that allows communication between ROS nodes or even ROS networks with RT Maps components and uh, or diagrams. The components are a subscriber and a publisher. The subscriber operates like a normal ROS nodes by um, uh, subscribing to ROS messages. So it is able to receive uh, different types of uh, ROS messages, convert them into a format that can be consumed by uh, RT maps. Um, and then there's a publisher. On the other hand, the publisher works by taking in uh, RT maps data format, converting this data format into a for in, into a format that can be ingestible by ROS and then publishes this um, um, uh, information so that uh, other ROS nodes can be able to use this data. So it, the subscription and the publishing will always be, be done uh, under a topic as is normally uh, the case with uh, both ROS1 and ROS2 communication protocol. Interesting. So Peter, why is it important to have a ROS bridge? Uh, ROS bridge is important both for uh, ROS users and, and RT maps users. For ROS users, it's uh, important if they do want to take advantage of uh, the various benefits of RT maps, such as a graphical user interface that allows them to drag and drop uh, uh, the application quite quickly, or to take advantage of uh, over 600 sensor and I/O uh, devices, in device interfaces that have been professionally developed. Uh, tested and maintained without having uh, 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 to spend time to recompile their project or convert their project into uh, the RT maps format. For the users of RT maps, uh, it's quite important if they have developed uh, uh, ROS nodes or they already got uh, ROS nodes from the community and would like to use these nodes or even test them without the necessity of having to uh, reconvert or convert these um, uh, nodes into the RT maps uh, format. So this saves a lot of time and resources for both users, both ROS users and RT maps users. Wow, thanks for clarifying that. And for those of you who might be unfamiliar with RT Maps, RT Maps, a real time multi sensor applications, is a multi sensor software framework for data logging and replay, software development, and real time execution. It enables developers in automotive, robotics, mining, agriculture, and other domains to quickly and easily develop multi sensor applications using a drag and drop model based mechanism. It provides a zero copy communication approach at low memory and CPU overhead and without any loss of data packets. But I'm curious, Peter, since there are multiple versions of ROS available, what versions are supported here? So thank you. That's a very good question. So uh, as we already know, ROS has two major versions, that is ROS1 and ROS2. So RT Maps has two bridges, that is a bridge for uh, supporting communications with ROS1 and a bridge for communications with ROS2. The bridge for ROS1 communication supports ROS Noetic and ROS Melodic, and the bridge for ROS2 supports uh, Eloquent, Foxy Fitzroy, and Humble Hospital. Hawksbill. Interesting. So, can you explain how the ROS bridge works within inside RT Maps? Yeah, this is a very good question. So, I'm going to share my screen so that I can go into RT Maps and show you how it operates inside RT Maps. So this is this is how uh, um, a normal RT maps diagram would look like. But what we are trying to look at is the, the 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 use of the ROS bridge. So I'm going to explain how this operates. As you can see, this is the normal RT maps uh, 
uh, uh, window or RTMAP software and the way it looks like. So here we have all the registered um, components in the library for components and your normal workspace. In this diagram, in the first, the first component is just a component to capture the webcam video. So as you can see, you're able to de to determine because we endorse the path for your video or for your webcam. Uh, the data output here is in maps image. So we would like to convert this into IPL image so that it's easy to consume by the webcam image publisher. So the image converter converts the image into the IPL image, which is expected by the publisher. As earlier indicated, ROS has two, uh, the, the ROS bridge has two components. So uh, if we look here, this is the ROS bridge. We have ROS2 uh, topic publisher and ROS2 topic uh, subscriber. So what we have here is a, a webcam image publisher. And this webcam image publisher publishes the image that we have received from the webcam uh, component. Um, and why do we do this? It's because we have two uh, uh, ROS uh, uh, nodes that are doing face detection and eye detection. Um, and these nodes are expecting uh, the webcam image so that they can process it and try to detect the faces and the eyes. So this uh, publisher publishes under this topic, webcam image topic. So if we went to uh, to the node, so I will go to um, to my VS code, we can see that the eye detection node is going to be expecting or it's subscribed to the webcam image and it is publishing at the webcam image eyes. This is for the eye detector. And similarly, this is what we expect for the face detector. So it's also uh, expecting um, a subscribing or expecting data from this topic, webcam image, but it will be publishing under webcam images faces. And so if we, um, I'm going to start three terminals because as we might already know, um, ROS uh, operates on the terminal. Um, so if I go to the terminal and try to start uh, some of these nodes, you see how it operates. So we have ROS2, run, uh, RT maps. Uh, so the package name is RT maps uh, ROS2 bridge. This is the package we have. And the node as you had seen is I detector. If I start this, it's then waiting for the webcam image. If I go to uh, ROS2 run RT maps, uh, we can auto complete. Yeah. Uh, in this case, we want the face detection, face detector. Again, it's waiting for the webcam image to come. And if you wanted to see what's happening with these nodes so that you can see how it's operating in ROS, we can do RQT graph. And you will see that, um, yeah, so let me refresh a little bit. So you can see that we have the, the, the two, the two uh, nodes subscribing to the webcam image. So they're expecting something from this topic. Currently, there's not, nothing coming in because we've not turned on our webcam. And then they are going to be publishing on these topics. So if we go back to RT Maps again, uh, the, as I have said, the publisher is publishing the image in this in this in this topic, and the subscriber for the face, as expected, will be subscribing uh, on the webcam images faces, and then we will view them in the viewer. The eye detection on the is sort of the same, so it's expecting or. or, or um, uh, subscribing, sorry for the for the name issue, but the, these are subscribers, not the, not uh, publishers. So it's expecting uh, webcam image eyes so that it it will subscribe and we can view the images. Um, so if I run the RTMAPS diagram, you will see my face in the office and. Um, you can see the detections. So, of course, because I have eyeglasses, they might not be really effective, but this is not the topic of the day. So this is because the models have been trained on faces without glasses. Um, but the topic is that you're able now to receive these um, uh, uh, images, despite the fact that they are from ROS. So if we go back to the RQT um, 
to the RQT uh, diagram and refresh it, you see a change now. So now we have the ROS, uh, RTMAPS ROS node, because RTMAPS is viewed as just a single, it runs on a single process. So to the ROS wall, this is just a single node. And you can see it's publishing under this topic again. The eye detection and the and the face detections are subscribing to the web image, and this is being published. So for the face, it's been published under webcam image faces, and for the eye detection, it's been published under webcam image eyes. And so in a nutshell, and 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 again, uh, there is the two nodes inside RT Maps are subscribed to these two topics, and then we are able to view this. So in a nutshell, this is a very simple uh, demonstration of how you can use the ROS bridge to, commun to communicate between both worlds of ROS and RT maps. Very cool. So can we also record and replay ROS data formats? Yes, of course. Um, uh, we are able to record ROS to MCAP data format inside RT maps, and for data replay, it is possible to replay ROS bug again inside RT maps. Thank you, Peter, for speaking with me today and answering some important questions on this topic. For all of you watching, please feel free to visit our website at www.dspace.com and submit any questions or topics that interest you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below and follow us for more exciting content. Thank you and have a great day. DSpace, your partner in simulation and validation.